Uh, this is what we are telling the world. We're talking to analysts, we're going abroad, speaking and in, 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 in launching small conferences to which we, we invite strategic people that we know that will be endorsing countries and, 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 and providers. Um, so that's pretty much the work we've been, we've been doing. Uh, regarding the focus of the whole thing of entrepreneurship, um, we do as a country and we keep on talking about that. Uh, for, in order for, for, to have large comp companies to operate, you have, you have to have uh, mid-sized companies and small companies and, 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 and entrepreneur hubs next to it. It's, it's an, an ecosystem that has to play together. And this bottom part, we don't have it. We, we don't have a, a, a support system for, for the entrepreneur. Uh, we are lacking that. We're working on that. A lot of initiatives have been launched, but uh, again, we're not there yet. So we need that alignment to be in place. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't say other countries have it all. Other countries have their own problems. That's, that's an advantage that we are not able to, to play with. We got to be out there and say we can do this and also we cannot do this. Uh, another, uh, I would say another relevant issue here in, in this whole subject is the fact that we as a country were never ever able to say that we are the best on this. We, we have to look at a niche, we, we have to look at a sector, we have to look at an area. To, we, we are a very small scale country. We're 10 million, we're never going to be 12 million. Uh, we're 10 million period. So. Uh, and shrinking. So we got to look at what do I want the world to know that I'm the very best of, you know, at. Uh, and, and that's totally needed. I mean, uh, we have fantastic cases in the banking sector, the financial services, health as well, uh, information technology, uh, telecoms. We are state of the art in telecoms. Uh, we, we teach the world, I mean, in, 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 in some, some areas of telecom. Um, but we cannot do it all. And, and before, when I was saying we need the commitment of all, I also, and I reinforce, say that we need the commitment of the students, of the people, of the community down here, because uh, uh, it, it must be an integrated approach to become something, and we're not something yet. We cannot have schools louching people out, companies thinking in their profit and loss account and, and not uh, 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 working together with the university, and at the very end, not doing anything together with the students, not channeling the students for whatever opportunities are there because the country will sell out if, 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 we, if we invest in, in this area and not on, on area B. So I think we, this overall crisis situation, and you were saying that, is actually opening doors for a, for a, for a change. Uh, and speaking of change, yes, we can. <laughs> Um, we were running uh, out of time, uh, but I have to ask you this also. It was mentioned the, the passion factor in, in being based in Lisbon. You've been all over, you decided to return to Lisbon. Let me ask you, how much did the, the passion factor um, uh, play into your decision? And, and also, uh, you mentioned about uh, how, how mis mistakes are natural part of, of the entrepreneurship process. Um, and since you, uh, um, you said how important it is to share mistakes made. What mistakes have you made since returning to Portugal oh, that you would like to return to us? Two months ago, so <laughs> not many mistakes yet. Uh, but I, I'm saying even making mistakes on on ideas. If if you have if you are a curious person and you know you want to know how things uh, work, uh, and if you have 100 ideas about the subject, maybe. 99 will be completely wrong, but it doesn't matter. Maybe one is, is good. Maybe in 1,000 ideas, 999 are bad and one is extremely good. So um, in, in, just don't be afraid of, of, of uh, having ideas that uh, then are, are failed in, in, in the laboratory. Uh, you, you, you can always learn with it. Just if you fall down, just get up and keep on going. That's that's how uh, that's how everybody should should uh, should go. Um, so about the second question was why did I the, the passion factor? Oh, by the uh, the passion, yeah. Uh, well, that that's extremely important, especially on the scientific level. Uh, I think most of you are doing a PhD. You know, sometimes in the labs, uh, things don't go as expected. It's obvious, and uh, there's a lot a lot of repetition and. Uh, uh, if you're doing a PhD for three, four years, um, sometimes, I mean, 
we always uh, make fun out of it. 95% uh, is is uh, is uh, negative data. Let's say like this. Um, so you need to be really motivated to do uh, to do um, a PhD to do research. And um, I mean, in 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 the entrepreneur uh, level, that's um, it, it, that's obligatory for me. If you're not motivated, if you're trying to open a company, it should be with motivation. Uh, if you have to work um, 18 hours in one day, you will do it because um, it's your passion. You just don't don't you just want it to, to go. As we so as we said, but being in Lisbon, coming to Lisbon, is that also something that uh, uh, is part of the passion? Is, is, is it? it is also, yeah. Uh, I, I think there's there's um, there's conditions uh, to. To develop my work here, my 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 ideas, my concepts, and uh, I think this is for me. Obviously, I'm Portuguese, but this is the best country for me to to build up this uh, this kind of research, you know, um, and to be an entrepreneur here. And things are changing now, so that's 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 good. People are more open. Um, I was speaking with the innovation department of the University of Lisbon, and they're really open on receiving my ideas and just. Go, just do your do, do your stuff. Okay. Yeah. Excellent, thank you, thank you, Celso. So uh, now this is the part where you wave, okay? <laughs> because of the lack of the glasses. Like, over there. Hello, I'm known from MIT Portugal program. Uh, I have a question directed to Guilherme, and I have to say one thing, which is Portugal outsourcing is a great idea. It's a great brand, actually, and it seems to be an excellent idea. But uh, from my point of view, and looking at my uh, age, at the people that are finishing their grades and their PhDs, we are failing to perceive that. Because what you said is true. Portugal has tremendous skilled people coming out of the universities. Uh, we get a lot of experience in our first years of, of industry, but then we are stuck. And right now we have two main things. Or we get a job in Portugal, or we go outside and we go to fight, mainly for financial reasons. We are exporting our, our most skilled people to, to other countries. And we are failing to perceive that we can, can actually outsource our services. Northern Europe, uh, and if you compare the skill and the cost from Northern Europe to Portugal, we gain a lot of value, a lot of value. We can be a tremendous supplier, basically in engineering, can be a trem tremendous supplier to every uh, high-tech company in Europe. And we are failing to perceive this. It seems that our universities are not conveying this message to us. They're saying, become an entrepreneur, get your own company. Yeah, but we need a product. It's not true. We don't need a product. We can export our knowledge, our skill and competence towards it. And my question is this, why are we failing to, to understand this? Because I would, say, I would say in a very arrogant way, I guess, that we didn't have to do it in the past few years. The country didn't have to do anything in the past few years. We just woke up. Because when I, main, when I mentioned the fact of um, there's not a network in place linking uh, the educational system the entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial or business, if you want, uh, overall system of the country. Who are we? Like, what services do we as a country want to, 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 to perform, sell, export, whatever? Um, and so things are just being done randomly and not together, not played together. So we, we, we lack that strategy. Um, this, uh, there are 30 plus uh, associations uh, of, 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 of companies, small companies, mid-sized companies, large companies, directly related to the, the information and, and, and communication technology sector. 30 plus in Portugal, 10 million people. Do we need 30 uh, associations talking the same talk? No. So it's totally ridiculous. So even this, even this, this, this mentality of clusters and 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 uh, and. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and forums of competitiveness, whatever it's called. Uh, these are recent moves. So I, w w when I keep on saying that we're, we're like on stage, I wouldn't say zero, but stage one of a, of a, of a total shift in the country, in the culture, in the mentality, I do believe we are. Uh, and, and, and actually the output of our four or five years uh, work 
uh, regarding promoting Portugal, getting people speaking together, uh, converging the, the work of the associations. Uh, this, is, this is paying off now, this is paying off. The, the, the example of uh, the outsourcing of the engineers you mentioned, uh, a, a very large scale relevant um, Brazilian dash North American dash Norwegian, Norwegian company that plays in the, in the oil field. Uh, it's, it's a different one, it's called Technip. Uh, yeah, uh, Technip, uh, they are growing dramatically. In obviously because in Brazil, obviously because of this, every week there's a new, a new, a new, a new uh, oil. Uh, missing the word down there. So they they they're developing their their activities, their services, and they they they've drained out the whole South American engineers. Uh, uh, of availability of, of resources. Every single university in South America now that, that, uh, that puts engineers in the market is looking at Technip and, so, and, and these companies because they know that they, they're going to absorb them all, they're going to take them all. So they drained out the market down there and they are looking at Portugal as a country that can, where they can find engineers to work for them in their operations in Brazil. What they're doing now is they're hiring um, bachelor, uh, bachelors and, and up, to, up to PhDs. They're hiring all sorts of engineers, all sorts of levels of qualification, of, of, of competence, of skills. They are keeping them in Portugal, working remotely to Brazil and with Brazil and other regions of the world, of course with Angola because of the oil of uh, Mozambique, the, uh, Norway, Scotland, Iceland and so on. And they're doing something that's very interesting. As they are hiring people in Portugal to perform, I wouldn't say simple tasks, but whatever tasks they have, they, the need to be performed, they are finding out that some of the engineers that they are identifying and interacting with, they are state of the art. So they are taking them to, to work offshore in Scotland, in Norway, uh, and so on. So this is the, the, the living proof that our talent is here, the quality of our resources is here, the availability of opportunities here. But again, you cannot be just out there waiting for Portuguese companies to hire you because we're under a crisis and nothing's going to change this like, like this. So this is it. This is where we are. Uh, very curiously, this weekend I met a friend of mine. He's 59. Uh, he was totally out of job. So he's, got a, he's, got a, he's, he's married, he's got a daughter, and he was totally out of job, going nuts. He took off, he went to London. He went to work for DHL, uh, packing airplanes and, and, and trucks. I mean, he, went, he was ready to do it all. He's an engineer that used to work in, um, if you're Portuguese, Lisnav, a major uh, Portuguese company of, of engineering maintenance to the, to the, to the huge ships. Uh, business. Um, after three years in London, he started sending uh, his resumes to all sorts of engineering companies, all, all sorts of companies. And within a year, he's the commercial director of the largest, most largest uh, shipyards in Gibraltar, working for a, for for an English company. So. It, uh, you, you can reply me now, okay, that's, that's a single example and we are a few thousand of, of, of people need, you know, seeking for a job. The, the point is, he, he, was, he was trained and, 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 and his education was received in Portugal. He never left Portugal and he's a very valuable resource that's employable right away to be close to Portugal, to be, to be performing you know, global operations. The Technip example is one amongst several companies that are hiring Portugal and keeping people in Portugal. So, uh, are we on a fantastic um, moment? Of course we aren't. We all know it. I mean, look at uh, even France officially announced recession this morning. France, I mean, uh, after several years of uh, periods of years, of they announced we are technically under a recession period. So. This is changing, but we can still play a role. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, we shouldn't, uh, I, I, some, I listen to a lot of my friends saying that they, they're taking off. They're taking off, and I just ask them, where to? I mean, where to? We're so, we're so awesome out there. They're, I'll go with you, you know? Uh, so focus all that energy in taking off, 
uh, I'm not speaking to you or to none of, none, of, none of us personally, but let's all together focus this energy of the taking off approach to doing something here. And uh, even when we, we, when we find gaps in the school, academia, and companies, and government, let's be the ones to come up with the ideas. Let's, let's develop a case. Let's, let's think about it. And we've got to be ch challenging to each other. I mean, or we're not going to go there. Thank you again. We're out of time, but uh, one more question. OK, over there. OK, uh, hello. Uh, this question is more directed to Celso Almeida, but of course, any answer is welcome. Uh, before you tried to start your own business, you traveled a lot and what, uh, worked and did research uh, all over the world. And from the life stories of other Portuguese entrepreneurs I've heard, uh, it's always uh, the same type of background. I mean, they've always traveled a lot. And uh, I wonder why is that? I mean, if we look at uh, American or Swedish, for example, entrepreneurs, do they have the same kind of background? Did they also travel a lot? Or is it, just, um, is it just something that we Portuguese are lacking, and so uh, we need to go somewhere else to bring it here? Thank you. Um, well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think it depends first on each person, or on which kind of knowledge you, you, you want to have. I, I went abroad because I wanted to, uh, well, I, I did the Erasmus, as, as I told you. Um, and I, I've experienced just another level of science, you know. And I, I just told myself, I, I can't go under, you know. I, I need more and more and more of, of this this type of, of, of research, you know. So um, I, I did it for the knowledge to, to, to be with the, with the best experts in the area, uh, in, in the Netherlands, in, in Germany, even now in Spain, they have great experts. So. Um, I did it for, for, for the knowledge, you know, to be with people that really know about my area, the, the area that I want to be an expert. And while being with them, um, I made them questions. I, I questioned, uh, why do you do, do like this? Why do you do things like that? And that gave me um, ideas, to my own ideas, obviously, and um, that I, I observed that they could be worked in an in entrepreneurial path. Um, so I don't know if this answered your question or not. Um, travel just broadens your horizons. Be it that you just go to Erasmus, you, you take a year, you do a project outside of Portugal. But it's not just Portuguese. It, it, it benefits any nationality. So the same, I, I'm Irish, so it, I can see Irish students going off and doing Erasmus because it just broadens your horizons. It gives you the exposure to, to different people, different thought processes and different perspectives. So it just really adds value. So it's, it, it just gives you a little bit more extra than more of the same. So, you know, it's, it's one of the differentiators that as an organization we look for you know, is if you actually, you know, have taken time out when you're doing your master thesis to, to, to do Erasmus because, you know, it, it just gives you that little bit extra and it just broadens your horizons that you may not even exist that is out there. So it is something, I think it does, it would help and I'd encourage people to not necessarily long term but look at the benefits of um, exploring other countries, other, you know, educational sectors in, and, and universities. I think it definitely can add value at the end of the day. Okay. I think that's all the time that uh, we have, but we can continue the, the discussion uh, later. Let me thank uh, Mary and uh, Guillermo and Cels for, uh, for being here. Uh, and I, I hope you're all leaving uh, the conference today feeling, uh, as Mary said, that yes, you can. Uh, yeah. There are the opportunities out there, and there's there's a way to do things. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.